Thank you so much for joining us for this special edition of CBS 19 News at Noon. I'm Dana Huey. Well, it's almost time. We are counting down to the total solar eclipse here in East Texas. We're about an hour and 42 minutes away from totality now. Can you believe it? Well, the first place in the U.S. to experience the total solar eclipse will be Eagle Pass, Texas. From there, the shadow of the moon travels diagonally across our state. You can see it right there, passing through small towns like Kerrville and Gilmer as well as big cities like Austin and Dallas. Let's go ahead and kick off our live team coverage now from downtown Tyler, where we find Mariah Condiff and Chief Meteorologist Brett Anthony. How are things going out there? Hey, Dana, I'm loving it out here already, especially being next to Brett. I've <laughs> oh, been thanks, waiting Mariah. all year for this yeah, moment. <laughs> we've been waiting seven years for this moment. We're down to the last hour and 42. And I got to tell you, I'm, I'm a little nervous. There are some clouds out here, but we have moments of sunshine. Yes. But every time I check satellite, there's a little clearing to our it's south. It's peeking out. Yeah, we just have to kind of freeze a moment in time. Yeah. If we're good between 140 and 145, mm -hmm. who cares? Yes. What right? I, I'm cool with it. I know people have been coming up to this. There's a ton of people here already, and they keep asking Brett, what's the forecast going to be looking like? They're it's like, are the clouds going to clear out? All right, let's the forecast. We're going to take a look out here at Well Zoo because, believe it or not, later on today, we're going to be seeing if the animals behave any differently during the solar <laughs> eclipse. In 2017, there were some known differences in the way animals behaved. 76 degrees right now. At Tyler Pounds, it says cloudy skies. Now, here's the important thing. We're looking at the visible satellite. So what does this do? It gives us more detail. And if you look carefully at Smith County or in the central portion of the screen where it says Tyler, you'll know a patch of clouds. You'll see a patch of clouds right over Tyler. They're sliding by, but notice the clouds thin out and notice the direction the clouds are moving from the south to the north. So I think in about an hour we're going to have some thinner clouds and that will be certainly good news. We'll be able to see everything in pretty good detail. Right now temperatures range from the upper 70s at Mineola to around 80 degrees at Henderson. The weather very nice right now and our forecast for the rest of today will be up to around uh, let's say 80 degrees by the time we have the eclipse and then this afternoon after the eclipse is over Mariah we're going to need folks to kind of head home pretty quickly. Yeah. We do have thunderstorms that will be developing. We have issued an eye on weather day for later today tonight and tomorrow. We're going to talk more about that coming up in just a few minutes but for right now I think we're going to squeeze this eclipse in with a, a magnificent memorable View. Yes, I'm excited. We need it. We need a celestial miracle. <laughs> <laughs> it gets on the way. Yes, okay. We'll send things back over to you, Dana. All right. Thank you, Brett and Mariah. We appreciate it. Can't wait to get back with you guys. Well, it's not just Tyler getting in on all of the action. We have crews all over East Texas. Our Jesus Martinez is in Gilmer at the Convention Center. But first, we'll head out to Dan Millay at Lindale's Darden Harvest Park. Dan, how's it looking out there? Hey Dana, it's looking pretty good. It's definitely a little cloudy outside. We're inside of Pickers Pavilion at Darden Harvest Park. I am surrounded by the Guardians of the Galaxy. There's some other interesting stuff going on in here. Let's check it on out. We've got the trees here, kind of simulating the nighttime eclipse kind of feel. Got some picture opportunities here, some kind of space circles. Honestly, I'm not 100% sure what's going on here, but it is a great picture opportunity that I am sure of. I'm gonna do a little jog over here. I'm in the forest now, E.T. above me, more notable characters here in Lindale. Everybody's coming, people from out of town, even people from outer space. Speaking of outer space, another good picture up. Hey, everybody. We'll keep it moving this way. I got some people watching me now. This is a great, this is probably my favorite picture opportunity. I'm not going to get in anybody's picture here. We've got Lindale, Texas, moon backdrop. Really well done. The city of Lindell spared no expenses. They really went all out putting this together. Like I said, it's kind of cloudy outside. Fingers crossed, Brett, that things clear up. But inside of Pickers Pavilion, it's a good time. And I know people are looking forward to what's to come. Oh, that is incredible. They didn't. They didn't spare any expense there. All right. Thanks, Dan. Hope it's a great turnout. And now we're going to turn things over to Jesus Martinez, who is up north at the Gilmer Civic Center. Jesus, good afternoon to you. Anything fun going on right there? I hear music. Hey, Dana. Yeah, we have some music up right now, and we have 
families here in Gilmer slowly trickling to the lawn here at the Civic Center. But first, I have the mayor of Gilmer himself, Tim Marshall. Tim, thank you for being with us here today. Yes, sir. You, you were talking about the guests that were coming into Gilmer. Tell us a little bit more about uh, all these people coming in. Well, we have people coming from all different places. Uh, Miss Long will touch on those yeah. different people that are from different places. I think one of the things that I was expecting most was uh, just a mass throng of mm -hmm. people. And I think a lot of cities are. But one of the things that after you get to thinking about it, People are staying home, they're off work, they're out. The, the typical, the shopping centers you'd think would be full of people. Yeah. They're not there, where are they? They're home, they have their own little ideal places where they're staying. And we appreciate them, we appreciate them coming to Gilmer and shopping. And this is an ideal little small town and we love it. And we're glad the people are here. We're glad the people have shown up and come from different parts of the Texas and even the, the United States. We have people that are not only from Texas, but are from further away. that have come specifically to this location to see the total eclipse which should be in just a few minutes there we go sun's coming out and i know a lot of people are going to be watching from their backyards a lot of people like you mentioned called out sick you know who i'm talking about i'll bring in lisa now lisa we're talking about people who are coming across the country you're having a tally of where people are coming from yes. where are people coming from here into gilmer so we have a lot of surrounding towns longview and of course in gilmer and then we've got we have upstate new york we have georgia florida lake jackson and minnesota so far so I'll be kind of keeping a census of that today, throughout the day, and the sun's out, sort of. <laughs> so we've, we've, we're, we're gonna be good. The storms are much later, so uh, I'm just so happy to see people here. And uh, we, we hope a lot of people are still coming in as, as we're speaking right now. So we're still expecting a full turnout. We, we have our peddlers, our vendors, our food trucks, We've got some cool vehicles on the yeah. parking lot, so awesome. come join us. There's We're definitely gonna... a lot to see, like uh, Lisa mentioned, food trucks, car shows, lots of picnics out here. We'll have more coverage coming up later uh, in the show, but Dana, back to you for now. All right, thanks, Jesus. Quite the moment for East Texas, and we are just a few moments away. It looks like an hour and 35 minutes to be exact to view the total solar eclipse. And before you look up, it is important to protect your eyes. We have what you need to know before you gaze up into the skies. You must use what are called ISO certified safe solar eclipse glasses. These protect your eyes when the sun is not yet fully eclipsed. Keep in mind, Sunglasses and most welding filters aren't dark enough to protect your eyes. It can actually lead to damage. Once the sky is dark, you'll see the solar corona. That's your cue to take off your glasses in view. The solar corona is a glowing white ring around the sun made of gases. They're usually hidden by the bright lights of the sun. And for areas of the country that will only see a partial solar eclipse, you'll have to keep your glasses on for the entire event. Outside of totality, there is no time when it's safe to look directly at the sun without eclipse glasses. These glasses right here, these are the ones you need. Well, as we have been talking about and taking a look at all things totally solar, we have Savannah Hale joining us live at the TJC Science Center. This is their Super Bowl there. Hello, Savannah, good to see you. How are things going? All right, thank you, Savannah. Well, we want to include you in on all of the fun, this once in a lifetime celestial event. Please submit photos of your solar eclipse watch parties on our Facebook page or email them to us at news at CBS 19 TV. 
Well, time is running out to purchase those solar eclipse glasses, but not to worry, coming up in the next few minutes, we have an alternative way for you to witness this one of a kind event. And the clouds are over parts of East Texas right now. As we get closer to totality, we will lose the sun's energy and we should lose these clouds. Plus they're moving from south to north. So we should still get a decent view in many parts of East Texas. We're back with the latest forecast and a look at the severe weather threat that comes in quickly behind the total solar eclipse. That's ahead, coming up. It's pretty exciting. Today is all about the eclipse and for good reason, as we won't see the next one till 2044. And if you don't have the proper safety glasses to view it, you can grab some household items to create your own. Check this out. Actually, we're going to go over to Brett and Mariah now who are going to give us an update of how things are looking in downtown Tyler. Well, hey, Dana, not too bad out here so far. We have, it seems like the TJC Symphony Band is behind us with the tunes. Sounds like the Wind Symphony is yes. playing. They're setting an appropriate mood. It's yes. very peaceful. It's the Celeste build up. Yes. The yeah. calm before the storm, right. but in this case, it's the eclipse. It's the eclipse and then the storms yeah. afterwards. So it'll be an interesting afternoon to watch things develop. Uh, right now we have cloudy skies. Yeah. Uh, I have noticed some clearing back to the south. Plus we have also the loss of solar radiation sometimes, and it did in 2017, will lead to a loss of the sun's energy, mm -hmm. which can create some clearing yes. right before totality. Fingers crossed. Exactly. So that's what we're watching. I see a lot of folks with their, their solar eclipse glasses. Definitely get those. Do not try to view this. Without doing so, you will damage the retina in your eyes. Yeah, that's right. That's the perfect way to go. All right, let's take a look at the forecast for the rest of today. We're looking at the Caldwell Zoo again, where, again, uh, animals will be on display. We'll see what how they react to the total solar eclipse. Sometimes a midday darkening can create, especially among insects, and you may hear them, crickets start chirping. 
Uh, your dogs or cats might do something a little bit strange. Dogs might start to bark because they think it's, you know, nighttime or uh, cats might want to go outside like they do in the evening. 76 right now. It's a little breezy, but not bad. Humidity has really come up. That humidity now, the dew points are in the upper 60s, so it feels humid. I'm going to be watching throughout the rest of the afternoon this visible satellite imagery, and yet there is another patch of clouds in southern Smith County that are moving through the city of Tyler right now, but over southern Anderson County and the middle parts of Cherokee County, the sky clears just a little bit. So if we can get just a little bit of clearing, and we don't have to have it completely clear, the cirrus clouds will still uh, give us a magnificent view of the solar eclipse. Perhaps the only thing we would not be able to see would be the stars behind uh, the eclipsed sun and also the planets and the opportunity to see the Ponds Brook Comet today. Uh, so we would need some clear skies. I am, however, hopeful, again, as we lose the sun's energy, we lose daytime heating, we lose that heat rising, cooling, and condensing into clouds. And as we saw in 2017, those clouds cleared about a half hour before totality, and the show was magnificent. Right now, it's comfortable outside. It's 80 down in Henderson and 80 at Lufkin. Those areas are outside of totality, in totality right now. You're looking at a 77 at Gilmer and at Mineola, 76 in Tyler, and up toward uh, Texarkana, temperatures are also in the upper 70s. So it's a comfortably breezy, somewhat humid day. Rest of the day, we'll watch at 3 o'clock for the clouds to begin to build. By the evening, we've got scattered, strong thunderstorms. So because of that, we have a CBS 19 Eye on Weather Day for the rest of this afternoon, tonight through Wednesday, for damaging winds, large hail, and there is an elevated tornado threat over the next couple of days. And that is why in the last couple of uh, severe weather setups, we have not issued any type of uh, CBS 19 Eye on Weather Day. We just didn't feel as if the weather would be threatening enough, and it certainly hasn't been. CBS CBS 19 radar all clear right now. Let's take a look at future skycast. I'm going to put this into motion. We're going to see three uh, heavier rounds of rain. One coming in, scattered thunderstorms tonight, especially near, just south of Interstate 20, north up toward Interstate 30. Then we've got another round tomorrow morning. Any of these could cause those damaging wind gusts or have a tornado warning in there. And then after we get past Tuesday evening, we get a little bit of a lull, and then Wednesday morning, the last round moves in, and we could see a lot of rainfall out of this. Wait till I show you just how much rain is in the forecast here. And we are talking about the flash flood threat also being a big possibility. So please remember, turn around, don't drown, don't try to drive through a high water. And because of these rainfall rates, could exceed an inch an hour in some locations. We could be looking at totals that could top out in that three and a half to four, maybe four and a half or isolated five inch rainfall amounts. And that will certainly cause some flash flood flooding in the short amount of time that this falls. So the rest of the CBS 19, uh, Baylor Scott White, Texas Spine Joint Hospital seven day forecast. The eclipse weather, we'll call it partly to mostly cloudy, but the clouds may be thin enough to still see the eclipse. That's good. Scattered thunderstorms otherwise by the end of the day. And then tomorrow, more thunderstorms, but it's 73. So could that mitigate the severe weather threat? A little bit, but we have a lot of low-level wind shear that will be contributing to tomorrow's storms. And then Wednesday, the thunderstorms wind down. Thursday morning, we start to clear out, and this weekend right now looks pretty good. So again, out here on the square, Totality Tyler, a lot of folks showing up, Mariah. Yes. And it looks like the clouds are, are showing up, too. They need to skedaddle. They need to get up out of here. Yeah, right now. <laughs> you are not welcome. Let's get back to some clearing. We're going to come up with, uh, we're starting at 12. 32, I think, and we're going to cover this all the way yes. through this afternoon. Yes, stick with us. Yeah. Yeah, we can't wait. We'll be watching and we'll be hoping that the sky's clear and we'll move on to the severe weather after that. Thank you guys. We'll be right back.
traveling diagonal across the whole state of Texas. It's expected to begin right at the border near Eagle Pass around noon. It travels northeast to Texarkana, so I guess we've already passed the Eagle Pass time. Then it's going to Texarkana, passing through small towns like Kerrville and Gilmer, as well as big cities like Austin and Dallas. And we are an hour and 21 minutes away from our big shot, hopefully, if the sky's clear. And today is all about the eclipse and for good reason, as we've been talking about, because we're not going to see another one till 2044. Can you believe that? If you don't have the proper safety glasses to view things, you can grab some household items to create your own experience. Check it out. Time is running out to get your solar glasses for safe viewing of the great American eclipse. Those shades are the only way to look directly at the sun without seriously damaging your eyes. But if you can't get your hands on those, you can make an eclipse pinhole projector box at home, which can be a fun project for the whole family. Here's what you'll need. A cereal box, aluminum foil, white paper, tape, a push pin, and scissors. Step one, trace the bottom of the cereal box on a piece of white paper and cut the paper out. Step two, tape the paper to the inside of the bottom of the box and seal the top. Step three, cut two rectangular holes into the top left and right of the box. Step four, cut a piece of aluminum foil to cover the left hole and tape in place. Step five, Poke a pinhole in the center of the foil. And finally, turn your back to the sun and look into the right hole. You will watch a projection of the eclipsed sun on the paper inside of the box. Happy viewing, and remember, never look directly at the sun with the naked eye. We're live outside the square, on the square actually, patiently waiting for the clouds to clear so we can see the I have to admit it, Brett, I'm getting a little nervous about these uh, clouds not parting ways so that we can see this total <laughs> solar eclipse. Give us some good news. Are you seeing anything out there in downtown Tyler? Yeah, the sun's back out, and I think the way we go now, the, the next hour, it's just going to be changeable skies. But as we get closer to totality, we lose the sun's radiation, right? And so because of that, you lose the sun's energy. And in 2017, a similar thing happened, and the clouds cleared right before totality. So I think a similar thing will happen today. Rest of the seven-day forecast, we got scattered thunderstorms later this afternoon, so we need to get everybody back home safely as soon as this thing is over. And then thunderstorms Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, 
maybe a small leftover thunderstorm Thursday. Otherwise, it does clear out for the weekend. So, yeah, we just uh, ha need the clouds to be uh, just enough of a clearing at totality to get a spectacular view. Of course, we'll be streaming out here live through totality. We're live on the square. I'm CBS 19 Chief Meteorologist Brett Anthony Dana. Back to you. All right, thank you, Brett. All right, we'll be waiting and watching for the total solar eclipse. Let's all keep our fingers crossed and our glasses ready. We'll see you back here or just join us, join them online for the streaming of the total solar eclipse. Have a good one.
Hi, everyone. I'm CBS IT Chief Meteorologist Brett Anthony, along with Mariah Not Kunda. Either. They thought they could get rid of us. I know, Not right? Yet. <laughs> we have been waiting for this pairing for months. A really long time. It's yeah. undefeated. <laughs> you have to understand that Mariah and I kid about having a podcast yes. because we talk about some really irrelevant or irrelevant <laughs> or irreverent things, yeah. <laughs> and they're also yeah. irrelevant yeah. to anybody else. But yeah, we have a lot of fun with that. Woo. And so I think today is going to be a lot of fun. We, we appreciate you joining us here on our stream yes. as we take you through this this once-in-a-lifetime event for many. Yes. You've actually experienced one before, right? In 2017. Tell us about it. That was 2017. I was at my sister-in-law's house up in Lawson, Missouri. And by the way, they are here today hey. for the event. So one time to wasn't enough for them. Right. And they brought along, they have an exchange student staying with them this year from Germany. So, yeah, there is someone. So Charlotte is going to be witnessing this unbelievable event. Shout out to Charlotte. Exactly. For coming all the way. <laughs> not only it's like spending the whole year away from family and, yes. and, and getting a high school uh, experience in the United States, but also coming to Thailand. Yeah, it's so the it's fantastic. full experience. So in 2017, when we were at their house, it was cloudy like this. And then I'd say it was it was later in the afternoon, but about 20 minutes before totality. Of course, you lose the sun's energy, and so we noticed that the sky began yeah. to clear up. Fingers so crossed. The sky cleared. We had this magnificent view to the point where we could experience the um, the diamond ring. Yes. When you look behind you, you get the little crescents on the ground. Ooh. We could see the the full corona. Yes. Right. We also had we could see the stars. And planets behind it so i'm expecting that if wow. we can get the clearing today this will happen and then the next first flash when it comes out of totality the diamond ring and then everything on that other side i'm looking forward to it yeah. i've only experienced a partial eclipse before so we're definitely getting underneath from out under the tent when we start to experience totality because we're not missing that. And right now, so we're just about an hour and five minutes away from okay. that. So, so it started near Eagle Pass, right? Yeah, so we've started toward Eagle Pass. I see some folks here. We have about 200 people out here. Yes. On, we are on the square in Tyler, in, in downtown Tyler. This is where, if you're watching over stream, maybe from a different part of the United States, we are on the, the square in Tyler, Texas, and we are watching a lot more folks show up here uh, there have been a lot of events. We've heard from the TJC Apache Wind Symphony. Yes. We've had some uh, bands. We've a had, local band. Yeah, a lot of local yes. bands playing. And so, you know, everybody's getting excited, and the sky is trying to clear. I'm seeing the sun. Just a little bit. Yeah, right? Oh, people S are starting to grab their uh, solar sunglasses. Sunglasses and look up. Because we've had first contact. That was at 1224. Okay. So if you look up now and you can see it, you should be able to kind of see a little carve out. Ooh, of the sun at this point. I'm uh, going to have to check that out. <laughs> okay. We have, say that again, Nathan. Mission Texas Live View. Oh, this is going to be from Mission Texas. It's a live okay, view. Perfect. Okay. And uh, tell me what we're seeing down there. Are, are we looking at the sun? Are we looking at just some people looking up at the sun? We're looking at the sun, and tell me about what it kind of looks like. So we're looking at the sun in Mission, Texas. If you're looking there live, you can probably see it. I cannot, uh, but um, hopefully we can start to see that little bit of first hopefully contact. Hopefully Mission, Texas there. doesn't have any uh, cloud cover. The little bit of the moon starting okay. to cover the sun. Perfect. All right. So when we have time, I'm, we're going to take a look at the national map of what today's eclipse mm -hmm. and where it will be visible from. Because this is really, we're calling this a great American eclipse. Yes, because, because it, it stretches. It's going to cover almost everybody in the United States I will love be that. in some part of totality, yes. whether it's 20% or total. And we're lucky because we're in complete totality here in Tyler. Yes, to see it. exactly. And so it's going to be visible from Texas all the way to Maine. So you can check out the map. It shows the path of totality that's striped right through the middle of the country mm -hmm. where the moon's shadow will completely cover the sun. People along the path will experience a total solar eclipse. The path of totality this time around, as opposed to 2017, this one is 105 miles wide and over half the country's population lives within about 250 miles. So I guess you could say it's totality cool. <laughs> I'm just saying. There I'm it is. Saying. There's, there it is. Mark it. We are going to play that one back. That yes. is fantastic. <laughs> All right. We're going to go ahead and send things over to CBS 19, Savannah Hill. She is live at the TJC Science Center. Hey, Savannah, how's it looking over there? 
Well, it's definitely a little bit warm out here. The sun is starting to come out. Like y'all had mentioned, I'm not going to look up at it because like you said, you need your glasses and I don't have mine out right now. But we were inside the Space and Science Center earlier and now you can see we have moved outside. Lots going on out here. We've got free food for TJC students. We've got music. There's inflatables, all kinds of stuff. They've got games. Really a good time for family and friends out here and of course TJC students, but anybody can come. Obviously, we're here, not TJC students, but we're having a great time. Warm out here. The sun is peeking out just a little bit. So once again, it's going to be a great time. Um, we definitely encourage anyone to come out if you can. If you can't come out to one of these events, make sure you're just getting outside and enjoying it. But don't forget your eclipse glasses. You want to make sure you have those because the eclipse has started, like Brett and Mariah were saying. So you want to make sure if you're looking up at the sun now that you do have those glasses because could hurt your eyes. So I'm going to toss it back to you guys. We're going to continue to join in on the fun, but I'm sure we'll have another check back in with y'all in just a bit. Yes, thank you, Savannah. We actually just took a step outside of our tent here. Yes. Grabbed our well, my glasses, glasses fell on the ground. Yes. I'm going to get them. I would describe it as maybe like a nibble out of a cookie it is a nibble out of a cookie that's a, that's a, that's a great except without the little teeth marks yeah, yeah. no teeth marks in the, in the moon right now right we're in the beginning stages and i'm glad that we were still able to see at least part the beginning of it right now yeah and the sky is really clear to me there are some mid-level clouds going to be back to our southwest uh, they'll probably overspread the cloud cover it depends on where you are in east texas what you're experiencing yeah. right now uh, but I think, again, as we get closer and closer to a totality, we lose that sun's energy. Uh, we should start to see clearer and clearer skies. I'm excited. Yeah, exactly. The weather gods are working in our favor. <laughs> hey, I Fingers wanted to point crossed. out my wife made this wonderful eclipse shirt here. Um, and so we have the family in from Missouri, and they yes. are seeing the eclipse. She made everybody a shirt like this, and it has, you know, the little eclipsed the moon being uh, eclipsing the sun it has the date on it and have, of course has the state yes. of texas on it right so you have to do that uh, i was offered <laughs> somebody came up wanted to buy the shirt <laughs> I, I guess if one somebody wanted to we have to give all the money to charity so yeah but, how uh, much i'll buy it off of your back <laughs> no we love chief meteorologist first lady it, <laughs> coming in clutch right real quick before we send things over to one of our reporters I do have one Eclipse trivia question for us. Oh, okay. Okay, we're gonna do one at a time. Okay. What is the name of the moon's dark inner shadow during totality? Well, I know this now. It's a, it's the Umbra. Okay. Yes, Shout out it's to the you. Umbra. Yes, right, thank you. Right one, right now. <laughs> if you didn't know that, it's the Umbra. Yes. Under my umbrella. Nice. Uh, All right. <laughs> Shout out Ludacris, right? <laughs> it's real. I know. <laughs> I am dead. All right, for now, guys, we're going to go ahead and send things over to Jesus Martinez. He's live in Gilmer. Uh, Jesus, how's it looking? Hey, we not we might <laughs> we might not be under some umbrellas, but we are under some clouds right now. But it has been in our favor, clouds and weather. Let me take this off because I cannot see. These are great. I was looking up at the sun earlier. The clouds are coming in. But it's been on and off. We have been able to see that cookie bite out of the sun. But let me just pan around to show you all the amount of people that are out here in Gilmer at the Civic Center lawn. We have wave it over there. Say hi. Y'all are on TV watching the eclipse. Let me tell you guys, we have people from all over the U.S., from Minnesota to New York to even to Longview. I know they're not in the path of totality, but they drove all the way out here to Gilmer to be in that path of totality. It's just an amazing event out here. We have a lot of amateur astronomers. We have people with photos over there. We got kids over there with telescopes. We have people playing trivia, just like y'all are over there. There was one group over there that was saying, how cold will it get once the moon goes in front of the sun? Well, the trivia card said it could be as cold as 20 or 20 degrees colder. So we'll see how cold it gets once totality hits here in Gilmore. But for now, hey, let me guys show you one more time. We got vendors out here. We got food trucks, music playing in the background. Lots of people here are super, super excited. Like I mentioned, amateur um, astronomers over here. We actually have someone who's a physicist, but they didn't want to tell us on camera, but we'll interview her in our next hit. She's actually from New York and she came here to see the eclipse and we got people from Houston as well. They said it was going to be cloudy, so they came up to East Texas, the best place where you can see the eclipse. And so far the clouds are holding up. Say hey y'all. Hey. Welcome to the East Texas Open. There we go. We can eat it, we can soap it, just don't eat the soap. There we go. Don't eat the soap and don't look at the sun without your glasses. Is that right? 
There we go. All right, Mariah and Brad, I'm going to send it back to you guys. There's a lot of people out here today. i got some more fun facts for you and some interviews right after when we come back here in Gilmer. Loving it. Yeah, absolutely. You have your so glasses on. <laughs> am, am I a little bit premature with these glasses, or is this the time? Well, no, now would be the time. You know, Jesus mentioned that the temperature could drop 20 degrees. Yes. In 2017, there were noted temperature drops of as much as 10 degrees in many locations. Wow. It's brief. Yeah. But you got to consider that you're getting, you know, a little bit of a evening mm -hmm. during the middle part of the day. Yes. So a lot of sort of evening effects. I mean, it doesn't get entirely dark, but it gets that beautiful sort of a uh, bellicera feeling in the evening. It. Yeah, where it's purplish around, especially here in totality, it'll be purplish around our edges. Um, so again, that's if we can keep enough clouds away that we can experience that. Yeah. But you ask about a lot of folks have been asking, is there a, t a moment when I can take my glasses off? And the answer is yes, but it's only for a brief moment. So we have this visual to help you. You'll want to have your glasses on for the partial eclipse, which is happening now. The phase called, when it gets to the phase called the diamond ring. And when you see what looks like beads traveling around the moon, those are known as Bailey's beads. All right, so you need the glasses on for all of that, but you'll be able to see that. And then during totality, that's the only time you can safely take your protect protective glasses off. And that's at 143, and it lasts for about two minutes. And so once totality is over, you're going to want to put those glasses back on mm -hmm. to protect your eyes. So it's brief, but when you can take your glasses off at totality, uh, even in today, and even if the clouds are thin, we should be able to see what's called the corona. Yes. So the corona is sort of this like magnetic, pearly sort of color that goes around the edge of the sun, yes. right? And I uh, was talking with Dr. Scott Lieberman, who lives here in East Texas, and he is a noted photographer. Yes. And he was taking some pre-eclipse pictures, and he noticed some extra sunspots on the sun. Mm -hmm. When you have extra sunspots on the sun, you can tend to have more solar flare activity, yes. which can sort of, um, not, I don't want to say magnify, but increase the impact or effect of the corona yes. so that could happen today oh my goodness i'm looking forward to it i actually just learned about solar flares and, co and coronas leading up to this but brad is the expert <laughs> <laughs> yes uh, well yeah uh, we, we figured out that uh, corona is not just for a lime yeah right no. <laughs> <laughs> okay so you mentioned that here in tyler we're gonna have about roughly two minutes of totality yeah 143 but about 145 Eclipse trivia question. What is the maximum length of totality for the total solar eclipse? Anywhere in the United States? Total. So, so the best place, which is in Mexico. Oh, um, is it four minutes and 31 seconds? Yes. Well, 28 seconds. Oh, okay. Super right. close. And if you didn't know, Sun Chips is going to be releasing a new flavor. <laughs> But it's only for the four minutes and 28 seconds. Really? Yes, it's it's the solar eclipse release. Get on it if you want those <laughs> chips. All right, our Dan Millay is out and about here this afternoon as we track this total solar eclipse. Once again, we are down on the square here in uh, Tyler, Texas. Yes. Dan Millay is going to be in Lindale at Total Eclipse of the Park. Ooh. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> it's at Darton Harvest Park. Dan, what are you experiencing so far out there in Lindale? Brett, well, you're absolutely right. It is the total eclipse of the park here in Lindale, and I am joined by Carolyn Caldwell with the city of Lindale. Carolyn, I, this has been a long time coming, this event. What's, what's the experience been so far like today? It's been great. I'm glad people are coming out. I'm glad the sky has opened up so we can actually see what we're all actually here for. Um, so we're excited. We're excited about Lindale being part of it. Yeah, and this, this, you know, this is just not a one-day event. This has been going on all weekend. So can you kind of tell me, you know, a little bit behind, or I guess the backstory behind what it took to put all this together? Well, a couple of years ago, our tourism director said that that we were going to be in the totality, and that we have three minutes of darkness. So we started planning, and then about eight months ago, we really started planning, and we did a three-day three event so that people could have something to do when they come to town. We had cars contest we got interactive art inside of our building it's still going on today and so we just want people to enjoy what's happening so. yeah and then you know tourism Siong, she was telling me she, you know talked to people from Louisiana California all over the country how exciting to have people from out of state coming to Lindale to see this historic event it's exciting I actually spoke to somebody from France so I don't know if they're visiting or they just came here but I was like okay that's a long ways away but it's a it's a 
pretty cool event. <laughs> It is pretty cool, and it's clearing up a little bit right now. The sun, it's trying to come out, but I mean, everybody here is set up. We're set up, we got our glasses. Brett, Mariah, I mean, this is really, it's gonna be an historic day and a lot of people out here to enjoy it. I'm looking forward to it. I know y'all are too. Absolutely. I would say hold on hope up there in Lindale because you do have clearing moving in your direction. So again, we'll be in and out of clouds. I think there's some more clouds trying to come back in, but we're still getting a nice, you know, cookie cut yes. shape out of the, the cookie. Um, yes, out of the sun right now. We're gonna see if it's expanded at all from the nibble of the cookie bite that it was just a few minutes ago. But for now we're actually gonna send things over to meteorologist Sarah Blue to explain the why behind the eclipse. Sarah. Hey, Brett and Mariah, thanks. Well, this all happens due to the orbit of the moon. So the moon is going to orbit between the sun and the earth. And as the sun rays are traveling from the sun into our atmosphere, they're going to get blocked by the moon's orbit. So it's passing right in between the sun and our planet. And then we're going to see that shadow get cast right here on planet Earth. And then that shadow is going to travel right here through the Lone Star State, creating that cookie cutter effect that Brett and Mariah were just talking about and that total solar eclipse that we're getting. So that's why we start to see that dark shadow fall across our skies. I'll have more on that coming up in a little bit. But Brett and Mariah, back to you.
All right, welcome back. You're looking at a live picture from Waco, Texas, where the eclipse has begun. We've already passed first contact. We're now approaching, I'd say, about a quarter of the sun being eclipsed by the moon. Mariah, at least the sky is clear right now. In yes. Waco, we've clouded back over for the time being here on the square in Tyler. Now, as we are patiently waiting here in Tyler for our moment of totality, I know, Brett, you have a couple furry friends. I do, and uh, during the annual eclipse back in, what was it, September, October, mm -hmm. um, they acted a little differently. Really? As it, yeah, it got a little darker. You know, we, we weren't in totality of the annual eclipse. It was partiality, but they still, you know, they, they started acting like they thought evening was coming. I wonder why. I think they sense just a different yeah. cha a change in the air temperature, mm -hmm. just to feel the colors, you know, just sounds. They start hearing a, little, a few more insects and things like that. Birds tend to get a little quieter. Yeah, they're feeding off of it. And the to energy. explain a little bit more of that, here's Sarah Blue. Solar eclipses have been known to cause excitement and happiness, at least for most of us. Have you ever thought about how the solar eclipse might impact our furry friends? The answer might surprise you. Solar eclipses are impactful for both humans and animals. If you paid attention during the 2016 solar eclipse, you may have noticed a small change in animal behavior. There have been reports of bugs going silent and wild animals starting their nighttime routines. However, for our dogs and cats at home, the shift will be minimal. Most animals will probably be unfazed by it. Um, I think at most will be a little bit confused. Veterinarian Joy Neely with Animal Medical Center in Tyler says the cats will remain largely unbothered, while dogs may take more of a notice. Some dogs may even become clingier than normal and need some extra reassurance. I think they would be more clingy to you, sticking to your leg if you're home, maybe a little vocalizing or whining, going to their food bowl, you know, it, more behavioral differences is what you'll see. I don't think animals are going to like go crazy and pant and run around the house or anything like that. According to Dr. Neely, it's unlikely that your pet will look directly at the sun, so you don't need to get lucky here in the eclipse glasses. But if you're a particularly worried pet parent, there are a few things you can do. Keeping your pet inside will negate most impacts your pet may experience. But if your dog or cat does have some anxiety, some treats and extra love will go a long way to help. If you have an animal that does have storm phobias uh, and are sensitive to weather changes, some are very in tune with that, a thunder shirt is always a good idea. However, any anxiety or confusion your pet does feel should pass quickly once the sun returns. And most pets will have minimal reactions but their wild counterparts may have more substantial impacts. When the total solar eclipse happens, for a brief moment, they'll start to experience what basically is the sun setting, right? And so they'll get ready for their nocturnal activities to become more active. They might start to uh, come out of their hiding spots. There are two reactions in wild animals. This depends on if they are diurnal and active during the day or nocturnal and awake at night. Diurnal animals may become silent and move toward their dens, and nocturnal animals may start to become more active. This phenomenon is most pronounced in light-sensitive creatures like birds and insects. Like crickets, you'll hear like quite often at night, you'll hear the chirping. So same thing with uh, during the total solar eclipse, you'll probably hear some of that activity as well. This reaction is caused by a small offsetting in the animal's circadian rhythm. Wild animals are sensitive to changes in light, and the lack of sunlight briefly tricks their brain into thinking night is approaching. This light sensitivity is much more pronounced in birds and insects than it is in cats and dogs. Dogs and cats have been domesticated and they're very routine oriented, whereas farm animals and chickens and outdoor zoo animals, things like that that are outside all the time and they're, not, they're still wild in nature, they're not as adapted to that. This wild nature creates the markedly different reactions we see between the two types of animals. There is still very little scientific research into eclipse animal behavior due to the rarity of the event. Most of our knowledge comes from reports from citizen scientists like you. So keep your eyes on the skies and on the animals during the eclipse April 8th. For CBS 19, I'm Sarah Blue. All right, well, thank you, Sarah. Lots of great information. In fact, the Caldwell Zoo is hosting their own totality of the sun event right now. So if you want to get wild with the zoo animals, <laughs> today's your day. Yeah, they had a, 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 a study down, I think it was in uh, North Carolina or maybe it's like one of the Carolinas in 2017 on some of the zoo animals. And they noticed that at the time of the eclipse, 
the giraffes began swaying. Oh, oh my goodness. Right, so there was some, something going on. Yeah, like maybe they sway in the energy. evening, and so yeah, they were like ready to sway a little bit. All right, let's take a look at this uh, eclipse fact for you. And that is gonna be the oldest recorded eclipse in human history. It may have been on November 30th. It's, it's wild that they can put pinpoint that date. How do they right even down know? To 3340, and that is gonna be rock carvings in Ireland appear to show the event. Is that BCE? Yes, before the Common Era. It's been <laughs> wow. that long ago. Yeah, so pretty wild stuff I was there, sure. and I documented <laughs> it, and I took a selfie, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, welcome to our uh, Great American Eclipse Totality Tyler live stream that we are doing here from the square on in Tyler. I am. CBS 19 Chief Meteorologist, Brett Anthony. And your favorite duo. I'm with Mariah Condit. <laughs> and we are out here covering this live event. Uh, through now, we are just about 43 minutes away mm -hmm. from totality. People right now, have already started putting their eclipse glasses on. Yeah, they're looking up. They're getting a little bit of a disc right now. The clouds have come back over. I think we're going to battle some clouds and sun. But again, I'm pretty hopeful. Uh, as we saw in 2017, the, the moment we get a little bit closer, the clouds will break up just a little bit. We should get still a decent view. At least here, uh, there are some other places throughout East Texas. Remember, the clouds are moving. Mm -hmm. They're moving north to or south to north across the area. So there are times where we cloud over, and there are times when we have sunshine. Yes. And so I think we're going to battle that. And then once we get a little bit closer, I'm hoping, I think there will be, uh, just a little more clearing and maybe just we enough need to the give clearing. Us a, a Whatever it takes. I need Mother Nature to turn into Mike Tyson with these clouds. And, and what? Get them out Knock of here. Knock them out of here? Yeah. <laughs> You're done. <laughs> yes, that, that would be a, a very helpful moment. You know, this, uh, we've been waiting seven years since mm -hmm. 2017 for uh, the Great American Eclipse, and all along we've known the path. Yes. Because you can tell the path years in advance. Uh, Dr. Bar Bo Hartwick over at the TJC Earth space or earth space and science center says that the next one in smith county isn't until 2343 so i know there's one in the united states in 2044 yeah. but in in east tyler like there in east texas like this yes 2343 so that means if you are in smith county right now and you are laying in bed get up and go outside right exactly <laughs> you know and, and at that moment of totality like i was watching on tv and back in 2017 up until about you know 10 minutes before mm -hmm. and i was like well i'm gonna go outside and, and yes. witness this now okay. we're here for you if you can't yeah but if you have the chance yeah you won't want to miss it it's just it's an amazing uh, it's a memorable event. You'll never forget it. And yeah. you'll you'll just, every moment of it will just be sort of like, what? Wow. It's worth wow. it. Yeah. I know absolutely. a lot of people are questioning, what's so special about this? You've actually experienced it once already yourself. It's worth experiencing in your opinion. Oh yeah, absolutely. And you know, when you get all of the right elements coming together where you can turn around and you start to see the hat little half disks mm -hmm. from the moon being eclipsed, and we may be getting to that point fairly soon if we can get enough sunshine to the point where you, you know, you look to one side, you'll see a bright flash on the horizon, and then you can look up and you see the diamond ring for a moment, and then you're into totality. I love it. And then you have uh, Bailey's beads, and then you go back to the other diamond ring, you get that bright flash on the other side, and you just kind of, you do it twice all in the span of about four minutes, which yes. is crazy. A lot can happen crazy. in four minutes. Yes, yes, just, yeah, if you think the weather turns around and changes fast in East Texas, wait till you see what this does. <laughs> I do have an Eclipse trivia question for right, you real quick. All right, please do, yeah. Another one, so who sings the iconic song, Total Eclipse of the Heart? That would be Bonnie Tyler. Yes. Right? yes Bonnie Tyler. I know there's been a lot of uh, play on that iconic song title, right? especially here in Smith County where people have been throwing events, Total Eclipse of the Heart, Total Eclipse of the Park over in Lindale, which we actually have a reporter there. Um, so we are going to go ahead and send things over to them, Total Eclipse of the Park. Park. Oh, Sarah Blue, actually. Hey, Mariah, thanks. Well, I am not in uh, Lindell. I'm here in the studio, but I'm going to tell you exactly where we can see that path of totality. So what's so special about this total solar eclipse is that 
all across America, you'll be able to see it. it may not be the total solar eclipse, but at least a partial coverage of the sun, no matter where you are, all the way out toward the Pacific Northwest, 20% coverage out there. And if we take a closer look at the Lone Star State, we're falling between that 80 and 100% coverage rate. Pretty cool, right? And if you take a look here in the dark, that's where we're seeing the path of totality. So 100% of the sun rays will be covered. That starts right here in the Lone Star State. That's going to move up to the northeast through Indiana and Ohio and all the way out toward Maine. I'm going to take a zoomed in look so you can see exactly where that path goes. The first place to see totality here in uh, the United States is a neighborhood called La Quintas Fronterizas, and it's going to continue to move up. Here in Tyler, we won't see totality until 1.43 p.m. So we have a ticker that's been going on in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen if you want to take a look at that and kind of count it down for you, but we'll see that only for two minutes. During that two minutes, you can safely take your eclipse glasses off and view the total solar eclipse. So remember, Put them right back on so you can protect your eyes. All right, I'm going to send it back out to Brett and Mariah. Brett, Mariah, how's it looking out there? Now hold on, we're IFB down. All right, well, I'm going to actually talk a little bit more about this while we're uh, waiting All right. for them well, to thank come you back so much, up. Sarah. Remember, we have that path you of totality I... coming through that is going to continue to move up to the northeast and make sure that you put on your total solar eclipse glasses. If you guys remember, though, we did have that total solar eclipse come through back in 2017. That didn't come through the Lone Star State though. That was in this blue path that you're seeing that stretches all the way to the East Coast and back toward uh, the Pacific Northwest, pretty close to Portland up there. However, that path of totality wasn't quite as wide as the one that we are seeing today. So overall, back in 2017, about 12 million people were in that path of totality. However, we are, well, well, we are definitely raising that number as we head into totality today. Over 30 million people are in the 2024 path of totality. And hey, there's a pretty cool city out there, uh, Carbondale, Illinois, that was in the 2017 solar eclipse, and that's in the solar eclipse today. So you guys are kind of lucky out. You have about two minutes and 20, or I should say 42 seconds of totality in Carbondale, Illinois. But overall, lots of totality, again, this year, we are following this red and green line that follows all the way up for totality right here in 20, or I should say 2024. Now, remember, we don't have our next total solar eclipse until 2044, so make sure you go ahead and see this one. I'm going to send it back to Brett and Mariah. Thank you, Sarah. Again, we are live out here on the square in downtown Tyler. They have the Totality Tyler event. TJC uh, Wind and Pacific. Yes. All right, TJC Apache Wind Ensemble. Perfectly curating the vibes for today. Yes, yeah, a great uh, vibe. Yeah, yeah. it's just a, a little cloudy, starting to see some breaks in the yeah. overcast again, so we're hoping that we clear back off. Uh, about 200 people, maybe more now. There mm -hmm. may be 300 people down here. I love that all people of all ages are out here. They feel this type of, they feel compelled. Everyone wants to catch a glimpse of this celestial event for sure. Yeah, I mean, Seeing a big connection. Seeing the kids connection. with the solar eclipse glasses on is so cute. And and I think, you know, when you get to that point, everybody everybody's looking up, and I think that's the reaction that you should look for. I know yes. everybody will try to take a picture of it, and it'd be pretty hard unless you have a special filter. Mm -hmm. But look around for the reaction of your family and, yes. and how they're experiencing this, because I think you'll see a lot of, especially if these, again, the clouds, kind of thicker Definitely. back to my south. I'm not liking that. Uh, but every time I look at the satellite view, it, it looked like they were trying to clear off just a little bit. I think we have Jesus ready. Yes, Jesus is live in Gilmer. Jesus, what's the crowd looking like right now? And has everyone got their uh, solar eclipse glasses on? Hey, you know, we're playing Cloud World Light because every time we come to Gilmer for this live hit, it's cloudy. But when we're off, the sun is full out. I was sweating earlier because it was the sun was so bright. Clouds right now, but hoping for some clearing. But you guys are speaking of family and how, you know, just look at the reactions. We have a whole lot of families out here in Gilmer, especially it being a small town. That's actually one of the things that attracted some families to come out here to Gilmer is this small town environment, one of which traveled all the way from Alabama. We have the Bo Camp family who traveled from Alabama, and they're here. You guys are playing uh, amateur. Right. Very amateur. Yes. Yeah, so you said you guys came all the way from Alabama. 
Alabama. How far was the drive in? Why East Texas and Gilmer? It's about a nine hour drive and uh, we actually started in Tyler. Mm -hmm. I just picked the closest thing from our house to uh, drive to. Yeah. And then we started looking at the weather and started headed toward Mount Pleasant and this looks a lot better than uh, driving all the way <laughs> over there. And so we stopped. You had to talk to the mayor. It's been fun so far. There we go. So what's been y'all's experience? First off, welcome to East Texas. What's been y'all's experience here so far? So far, I mean, Texas is great. We had a really good breakfast. Um, we got these, uh, the hotel gave us some extra glasses. That was really nice. We brought our telescope with us, some really light equipment. Uh, cloud cover, like you said, had been yeah. crazy, but it's peeked through a couple of times. We got a couple of good pictures, uh, but overall, it's, it's, it's a really nice uh, area. There we go. Definitely playing cloud roulette, and you guys have a telescope here. Do you guys want to show this off real quick? What is this that you guys have here that you guys brought today? It's a starter telescope. It has a piece that's taken off of it right now. We, we made a sun shield for it, um, so we kind of modified that so we could look uh, through it at the sun. But it looks like we're going to have to wait until totality, and then we'll take the shield off and we'll uh, see what kind of pictures we get. There we go. So let me ask you, is this y'all's first uh, solar eclipse ever? Very first. Yeah, I got interested. I read a book where uh, I, the theory of Einstein's theory was trying to be proven with the eclipse. Yeah. I was like, well, that's really, really interesting. I just, <laughs> I never knew. And so my daughter, uh, we homeschool. My daughter was very interested in uh, astronomy, and I'm like, well, let's let's go do this. There we go. So this is a field trip for you guys today. Field trip. Yep. Most That's people right. are out of school. You guys took it to the next level, a whole That's field right. trip and a road trip. I guess, uh, what are you guys most excited for once you know the totality hits? Well, if we get good pictures, you know, hopefully the clouds will break and we'll actually get to see some totality. Um, I've got a cool little app. I guess we're going to get two minutes and 30 seconds. Yeah. And uh, that'll give us enough time to take some pictures and take the glasses off and just have that experience. There we go. So hopefully the clouds aren't around by that time. But hey, thank you all so much for coming over to East Texas and thank you for sharing y'all's story. Thank you. Awesome. Well, hey, let me tell you guys, that's just one of the many families that are out here today. Like I said, people have been traveling from New York, from Alabama. We've got some people from Longview as well, because Longview, like I mentioned, 100% totality and 99.99999% totality is the difference between day and night. So people decided to make a little road trip out here to Gilmer, where we are in 100% totality. Got about two to three minutes of totality here, hopefully. Really hoping the celestial gods for us, like you guys were mentioning, clear out the clouds and we can see some actual totality. We weren't able to see that earlier, but let me pan on over. We got other people with cameras over here. If you want to pan on over, we got people with cameras, people on their benches. We got people just looking all over the place. And we also got a whole bunch of stuff out here. Families out here with picnics, making little crafts as well. So just a great time overall here. Hey, I'll talk more about the eclipse here in Gilmer and how things are going so far. I have more interviews in our next hit. Awesome, thank you so much, Jesus. You know, one thing that you uh, mentioned when you were interviewing that family was that his daughter's into astronomy and I think Brett could probably easily relate to that statement as well. I am really into astrology, so <laughs> we've got like the whole little mixture here for us this afternoon. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, you know, even if we have some cloud cover and the sun does become um, eclipsed, it's still going to get dark. Yeah. Uh, the only thing that we miss out on, of course, is the view, mm -hmm. but it will still have that sort of darkened evenings feel to it. But so you'll still it. sense that we're in totality, yeah. even if you can't see it. Right. But uh, I'm hoping, and just looking back to our southwest, those clouds just look a little thicker than what the satellite would indicate. So uh, hopefully we can get rid of those. But uh, yeah, we're running, we're now to about a half hour away. So things ought to start to, to help out with that sun up there and starting to lose that uh, solar radiation yes. off of the sunshine. So, uh, all right, before we go to Dan, let's, let's talk about if you don't have glasses, uh, what can you do and how can you see so what happens if you don't have a pair of eclipse glasses? Don't mm -hmm. worry, there's still a way to enjoy the eclipse without damaging your eyes, and all you need is a few things you probably have around the house. Check this out. Get to DIYing. Time is running out to get your solar glasses for safe viewing of the great American eclipse. Those shades are the only way to look directly at the sun without seriously damaging your eyes. But if you can't get your hands on those, you can make an Eclipse pinhole projector box at home, which can be a fun project for the whole family. Here's what you'll need. A cereal box, aluminum foil, white paper, tape, a push pin, and scissors. Step one, trace the bottom of the cereal box on a piece of white paper and cut the paper out. Step two, Tape the paper to the inside of the bottom of the box and seal the top. Step three, cut two rectangular holes into the top left and right of the box. Step four, cut a piece of aluminum foil to cover the left hole 
and tape in place. Step five, poke a pinhole in the center of the foil. And finally, turn your back to the sun and look into the right hole. You will watch a projection of the eclipsed sun on the paper inside of the box. Happy viewing and remember, never look directly at the sun with the naked eye. All right, thank you. Yes, as he mentioned, you're definitely going to want to get you a pair of these or DIY your own. And it has to have ISO on it for it to be certified. You don't want to fall victim to a scam because it could damage your eyes. Hopefully, though, people in Lindale at the Total Eclipse of the Park have their glasses on hands already while they're out celebrating. We're going to go ahead and check in, though, with our reporter, CBS 19, Dan Millay. Good afternoon, Dan. Hey, good afternoon, Mariah. I am joined here in Lindale by two special guests today. I've got Rick and Beth Lambert, parents, of course, of country music star Miranda Lambert. So the Lamberts, how exciting is it to be in Lindale today, see all these people visiting for the eclipse? It's an exciting day. It's been three days of entertainment. We had a fabulous car show on Friday. People were down walking around, eating out of the food trucks yesterday. It's, it's just so exciting to see this kind of tourism in our town to start with. And um, also this event we're all going to see for the first and last time for most of us. Yeah, I was talking to a lot of people uh, over at our store, Pink Pistol there, and, and uh, a lot of people had never been to Lindale before, and they said, we want to move here. This is a neat little town, you know, there's a lot of going on, you know, so we said, well, come on. It's, it's a growing, growing place, but yeah, this is a special time, so That's we're awesome. we're proud to have them all here. That's awesome. Yeah, it is. It is great to see so many people, you know, kind of being a part of the Lindale community, even if it just is for the day or for the weekend. Beth, I know you've been very excited. You've been looking up at the sun. How long have you been looking forward to this eclipse? I've been looking forward to this event for probably a year. Uh, my son called me about a year ago and said, you know, you're on the path to totality. And I'm like, what what kind of totality? <laughs> what, what are we speaking of? And so he told me all about it. And then I, I subsequently went and met with Siong, our tourism director. And she said we were doing this, you know, eclipse, total eclipse of the park. And I've just been on 11 about it ever since I heard about it. Rick, are you also over 11 about it? I'm over 11, yes. I'm, I'm, on this, 11. This is me over 11. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You know, that's that's me over 11 too, Rick. I, I understand that. No, but I mean, this is a really exciting day. I mean, how, how, how awesome is it to see all the food trucks, everybody enjoying themselves on this beautiful day? Seeing this beautiful day is what's awesome because we, you know, the weather forecast drove a lot of people away from a lot of places. And it looks like that we're going to get a reprieve from that. And I'm tickled about that. But everything here, I mean, just, you know, you go buy a turkey leg from the from the people and and uh, give them your business for being here. Uh, it's a good thing for the, for the town, and they've done a good job of promoting. It. Absolutely. Well, we're counting down to that totality. We're what less than half an hour, we're almost there. So Brett, Mariah, I'm going to throw it back to y'all and just keep kicking it here in Lindale. I can't wait for this eclipse. Yes. It's Ex good to hear that they're seeing some sunshine yes. there in Lindale. Yeah. Exciting times over in Lindale, not too far out from where we're at here at the Square downtown Tyler. I did notice I took a peek outside with my glasses. We still got that cloud Glad coverage. No yeah. It's just not letting up here. So we're a half hour out, and so this is where things could start to change dramatically in terms of that loss of solar radiation, and then the, yes. the clouds begin to, to film, so, or thin out. So we'll know we'll hear it a little bit, uh, whether or not that will look that what's going to happen right now and those clouds look pretty they're lower clouds than what a lot of the computer modeling mm -hmm. data suggested thought it would be high thin cirrus clouds these are some lower clouds we know we have thunderstorms coming in later today we knew there would be a sort of a sort surge in moisture uh, as the day went on i mean we're, it's pretty humid our dew points in the upper 60s so that little bit of moisture surging in here is certainly not helping yeah uh there's still hope there's still time uh, we just don't need and there are places that are seeing so it may be a difference of where you are as to what your experience is like so that's certainly good news and that's exactly why we're out here minute by minute yep. until the moment of totality passes but there was something viral one of the little rumors on social media that people are taking rockets to get a better view if that was true i would love for that to be here in east texas so we could just get past the clouds right uh, <laughs> but millions of people are traveling the city to get the best view of the solar eclipse verifies Adrian, uh, Ariana Detail, Detail looks into the claims that NASA is launching rockets during the eclipse so they can get a closer look yes. too. 
On Monday, April 8th, a total solar eclipse will cross parts of 15 U.S. states from Texas to Maine, plunging residents into a midday darkness. There have been a lot of questionable theories and fear-mongering about emergency plans on social media. So let's verify. Is NASA actually launching rockets during the eclipse? These are our sources. NASA wants a good view of the eclipse, just like the rest of us. But their goal is to gather data. Three, two, one. NASA says it will launch three sounding rockets into the moon's shadow on April 8th to study how the eclipse affects the Earth's upper atmosphere. The sounding rockets will launch at three different times from NASA's Wallops Flight Facility in Wallops Island, Virginia, 45 minutes before the peak eclipse, when the eclipse reaches its peak, and 45 minutes later. NASA says the rockets are expected to reach a maximum altitude of roughly 260 miles, and that people in the mid-Atlantic region of the U.S. may be able to see the rocket launches depending on weather conditions. So we can verify, yes, NASA is launching rockets during the solar eclipse for research purposes. So what does NASA hope to learn from these launches? Arel Barjatya, a professor of engineering physics and director of the Space and Atmospheric Instrumentation Lab at Embry-Riddle Aeronautic University, says the mission's main goal is to study how the eclipse impacts radio signals and satellite communications. Barjatya says gathering this data will help scientists validate and improve current models that help predict potential disturbances to our communications, especially high-frequency communication. With your Verify, I'm Ariande Till. All righty, interesting stuff there. I wish I could experience it from a rocket for sure. <laughs> right, that would be quite the view. You know, there were t uh, there were two flights, I believe, that were going from Austin to Detroit, f flying along the path wow. of the eclipse, and then the pilots had a certain like movement they were going to do, yeah, so that both sides of the plane could right. experience it. Wow, know, so, that's yeah. inclusive. That is, yeah, exactly <laughs> right. So, all right, so uh, we are talking about. Um, a lot of things today yeah. in, in terms of you know what happens with the eclipse different experiences that you have and our meteorologist sarah blue is back in the studio with uh, another explainer just surrounding today's once in a lifetime event sarah mm -hmm. hey brett well yeah definitely a big thing today is make sure you have your eclipse glasses with or without clouds you need them to protect your eyes and you'll need to wear them pretty much all through every stage of the solar eclipse, except for one. I'll get to that in just a second. So we have already started to see the solar eclipse fall across East Texas. So if you're looking up at the sky, make sure you put on your total solar eclipse glasses. These are thousands of times stronger than your average sunglasses, so you'll definitely need them to be safe. You'll need your total solar eclipse glasses. I can't see our uh, screen here to read it, but all right through the partial solar eclipses, which is what we're seeing now until the diamond ring phase, which is when we'll start to see a couple of bright patches of sunlight just on the edge all the way to Bailey's beads. This one is one of my favorites. That's when you'll see a couple of flashes of sunlight making it through the ridges and valleys on the moon. You'll still need your total solar clip glasses on at that point. But then once we reach totality, that's lasting anywhere between two to four minutes, depending on where you are in the path and you can safely remove your glasses and look up at the sky. That's because the solar radiation that would harm your eyes is being blocked thanks to these babies. But then once we start to see the moon kind of orbit out and we see the sunlight return, make sure that you go ahead and put your total solar eclipse glasses back on so you can view it safely. Well, Brett and Mariah, I really hope that you guys are getting ready to put on your total solar eclipse glasses because we are getting pretty close to totality. I'm gonna send it back to you guys. Yes, I beat you to it, Sarah. <laughs> I'm trusting you. I'm trusting my weather team when you tell me to put my total solar eclipse glasses on. I'm putting them on. Exactly. So we have 143 for total mm -hmm. totality here in Tyler's, about 121. How can so you see your clock? I mean, I you're... don't have my glasses on. What? I took them off because I, I mean, I looked up, but like the sun's up there right now. Again. Yeah. I see some people look, go looking up, but if you are peeking out, there ooh, it is. Yeah. it's like a crescent, but yeah, I can't tell if that's the actual stage of it, of it or the cloud. Well, it's it's about three quarters covered up right now. Yeah. You can kind of feel the way it's getting a little bit darker and we just had a cloud that slide so back true. over top of it. Um, yeah, so we're just about 21 minutes away, so things should be starting to change. Hopefully there are folks around East Texas that are getting a pretty good view of this. But the, yes. yeah, the low clouds are trying to surge in here from these the threat of thunderstorms. And that is the other part of the story to talk about today is that soon after totality ends here and we get past about 2 o'clock 
and we start seeing the sun come out on the other side, mm -hmm. uh, we are eventually going to start to see, I think, a rapid development of showers and thunderstorms, and those will likely probably ramp up by 4 o'clock, and by 6 o'clock, many of us will be uh, in some showers and thunderstorms. I have not checked with Storm Prediction Center here recently, but they could issue a watch. Uh, later on today for parts of East Texas, we do have this labeled as the CBS 19 Eye on Weather Day just because we think that the showers and thunderstorms are, are really going to ramp up, especially tonight and then late tonight overnight into tomorrow morning. And this would be particularly so if you're camping tonight uh, mm -hmm. near along Interstate 20 from Dallas to stay over to the Arklatex, a pretty heavy area of rain and yeah. thunderstorms moving in. And that's the tricky part because typically, I know you experienced it when you were in Missouri a few years ago, that heavy congestion of traffic flow. So it's like on one hand, people are like, I'm ready to get up out of here and beat the storms. But then they also might have to consider maybe waiting the storms out. I don't know. Yeah, it took Timing us. Timing is everything. And, and it was a similar situation there. We had thunderstorms that would come in right after that. The sun's out now. Let's hope this there it's it is. It starts battling again. the clouds. Um, and it took us, uh, I think, four hours to go 30 miles. Four so, hours. Yeah, it took a long time. And we were coming from a rural area back toward a city and then trying to get back onto an interstate to head south. Once we got out of the area of totality, it was clear sailing. See, that but is my own personal get... worst nightmare. I hate traffic. <laughs> and some East Texas officials that we spoke with leading up to this celestial event did tell us that uh, it could take you about two hours if you're in Tyler after totality. And then if you're traveling down I-20 West, up to eight hours of congestion. Oh yeah, and I would see that because you know we're closer to the edge of totality in yes. Tyler than say toward Terrell or over toward Dallas. All right, uh, Savannah Hale, our meteorologist Savannah Hale is over at the uh, TJC Earth Space and Science Center where they have had a live feed of the event. Yes. Uh, probably a better feed than what we've been able to see so far here today. Thanks is it in to the dome? Uh, I, they're, they're probably streaming NASA. Uh, NASA, uh, well let's find out from Savannah, what's going on? Let us on? know, Savannah. <laughs> they, you, you guys are right. They are streaming NASA, but we came outside a little bit ago because there's a lot more happening out here. I will say the stream was really cool. They do have that going on throughout the path. So that started right around noon and they're tracking totality across the United States. But I wanted you to take a look outside. We've got a lot going on out here. A lot of people have gathered. We've got students, we've got faculty, we've got staff. We've even got people um, in the community. I've already met some CBS 19 viewers out here. It's been really fun, really cool. We've got lots of live music, lots happening, food, lots of fun. Um, now, I will say it has gotten a little cloudy out here, but I could feel slightly maybe a temperature drop that might just because of the cloud be because of the clouds, but definitely a cool time out here right now. We're going to keep having a good time as well. We're getting closer and closer to totality, so that will be coming up in just a few minutes, maybe less than 20. My watch died, but it is coming up pretty soon. Remember, you need those glasses if you want to look at the sun right now. Still a little cloudy, but I'm very excited for totality for it to get dark out here. I think a lot of people are anticipating it. A lot of people have started to stand up um, and point their bodies in the direction of the sun. They're getting ready for this. Um, so it's going to be really cool. We've heard from a lot of people at the event about how they're super excited to be here. So it's been a really good time so far, and we're excited to continue um, our coverage out here. But for now, I'm going to toss it back to you guys um, out in downtown Tyler. We're just as excited, definitely. Yeah, and here we have about 300 people yeah. gathered on the square. To Growing see. minute by minute. Exactly, to see this totality and every, we're, we're battling the same thing, clouds, sunshine. Mm -hmm. Of course, we're also, we haven't looked up, but you know, we're starting to get almost get about three quarters mm -hmm. eclipsed. So, yeah. all right, we're gonna continue our live coverage here on CBS19.tv and on our Facebook page and YouTube channel. We are live on the square. We're taking a quick break, but Mariah and I will be back in a couple of minutes. Stay with us.
All right, thanks so much for sticking with us all afternoon long. We are closer and closer to the total solar eclipse happening right here in East Texas. Parts of to uh, East Texas will be in the path of totality. We're about 10 minutes out from it. Yeah, well, yeah, about 12. 12. Well, we're getting very close. We're still, now the sun's trying to peek out. There are some folks that are on this, the corner over here. We have about 300 people mm -hmm. here on the square in downtown Tyler. I thought there'd be a little more clearing than what we're seeing, but the clouds are advancing a little faster. In fact, yeah. the National Weather Service office out of Houston, I believe this place, Houston County and probably Trinity County, the tornado watching until 8 o'clock this evening. So let's go to meteorologist Sarah Blue. She's in the Weather Center uh, watching any kind of watches and warnings that are coming in. Sarah, we know after the eclipse today, we are going to have some thunderstorms to deal with. What's the latest? Hey, Brett, thank you. Well, yes, we just got this issue just minutes ago. This tornado watch for the areas that are highlighted in red on your screen. That includes Palestine and Crockett. Those are our larger cities. So Houston and Trinity County, as well as areas out to the north. We're already starting to see a couple of showers pop up toward Hemp Hill into areas out to the south. These are going to move up to the uh, to the north rather quickly. Uh, with this, we are seeing some hail coming out of them, uh, out of these cells toward Hemp Hill and south of Lufkin. This will continue to move up to the north. So I'm going to put our future cast into motion here. These storms will continue to climb up to the north toward Carthage Center, St. Augustine, and toward Nacogdoches. They're going to continue to just trek up to the north, bringing gusty winds, the potential for a tornado for these areas that were highlighted toward Crockett and Groveton. Those are our largest cities that are currently our largest East Texas cities that are currently under that tornado watch. And this is going to continue to track up to the east again, bringing gusty winds, some hail and the potential for tornadoes toward deeper East Texas. So you want to make sure that you are staying weather aware, especially if you are any in any of these highlighted regions on the screen. Again, this tornado watch is going through 8 p.m. tonight, so make sure that you have two ways to, re to receive weather information. That can be us here at CBS 19 and a CBS, or I should say a NOAA weather radio. You just want to make sure that you are staying updated with the forecast. I'm going to keep tracking this in the weather center, but I'm going to send this back out to Brett and Mariah, and we'll see how things are looking outside. Send it out to you guys. All right, Sarah, I know it, it may look like it's, I mean, it's cloudy out here, yeah. don't get me wrong, but it looks cloudy or darker because, yeah, we are just about almost seven eighths eclipsed at this point. Yeah, and between the cloud coverage and the solar eclipse glasses, sometimes I can't tell if my eclipse glasses are just too dark or if yeah. it's the clouds covering it. But even still, we're still getting peaks of the um, eclipse movement as it progresses to totality. So hopefully when we get to that moment, we get a glimpse of it. Yeah, exactly. I know we were expecting two minutes, but I'll take two seconds. And, and, and we're still seven minutes away, so there's still a chance that we, we, we have noticed the temperature has cooled. Mm -hmm. um, we are down to Ooh, you're right. 82 degrees. Uh, it was a little bit, I think it was up to 84 a little while ago, so we've cooled off about two degrees. There should be an additional cooling as we go through now, the sun is trying I to hope pop so, back out it's here. Humid. Right. I mean, you, you look down at the pavement and, you know, it just kind of looks like we're not seeing much of a change. But when you look up there, now it's, it, it's still that's it, that the deceiving thing is with the clouds, you're tempted to look up without your right. solar uh, uh, eclipse glasses on. But please put those on before you look up. Uh, because at any moment that the sun pops out behind it and we're not into totality yet. So you can still uh, suffer some retina damage from the sun's bright rays that are mm -hmm. still coming out from behind the sun. And, you know, it's just one of the differences between totality and 99, right. 99, 99.5%. <laughs> it's the biggest difference in the world. Which All is right. exactly what Jesus was talking about in Gilmer. The difference in, between totality and 99.99999. Hey, Seuss is live at the Civic Center out there. Hey, Seuss, we are getting closer and closer. What is the energy feeling like? Are people excited? Hey, yeah, don't mind me. Just trying to look up the sun with my eclipse glasses because for the first time in this entire show, the sun has finally come out while we are live. We're getting lucky. And let me tell you, we have started feeling the, um, the effects of this eclipse. The wind started picking up earlier while we were interviewing a family. And I think the best way to describe it, if you're not outside already, is imagine you're taking a photo on your phone and you turn down the brightness and it gets a little dark. That's exactly how it feels like. So our eyes are our own camera right now for this eclipse. We are maybe about five to 10 minutes away from totality here in Gilmer. And let me just pan around so I can show you everyone in this lawn 
is ready. They have their phones out, they have their Eclipse glasses on. A whole lot of families out here just really enjoying the day, looking at this once in a lifetime experience. Thankfully, Brett was right, saying that the clouds were gonna dissipate as the sun gets blocked by the moon. And thankfully it's happened just in time. And like we were mentioning, we just need this little sliver of timing of eclipse uh, or of um, clarity while the eclipse happens. And so we're getting super lucky out here in Gilmer. Family who drove all the way from Wisconsin, East Texas. We got families from Alabama, New York, literally from all over the country. And you know, it's not just the eclipse that's bringing them here. It's also family. A lot of these families we've spoken to have close family or relatives that live in the area and said, hey, why not making a trip out to East Texas and see it with the family? We see people here with their cameras already saying, hey, we got people like I mentioned from New York, Alabama, all over the country. And so I don't know if you guys can tell or how good this camera is, but you know, it's quite amazing to see even over here in the parking lot. We got people under the trees, picnics. Why not make this a good little field trip? We spoke to, you guys mentioned, or, or, or we mentioned of our hits. There's a family from Alabama here who they homeschool their kids and this is actually their field trip. So what a best day to have a field trip out here. And like I mentioned, picnics out here and everything. And so it's just an amazing time out here. And look at the floor right now. If you want to pan down real quick, these are the little shadows with the little moons we're talking about. Quite amazing to see. So a little bit of everything happening out here in Gilmer, totality in just about five to 10 minutes. So We'll send it back to you guys and Tyler. Seven hopefully you're all having just as good as an experience we are here in Gilmer. Uh, uh, well, I would say we're jealous. Un, yeah, we're very jealous. The fact that you're getting the little crescents yes. on the ground is just a, a, an absolute perfect example of what, what will happen. And hopefully the sky will stay clear long enough that you'll be able to experience the, the Bailey's beads, the diamond ring, yes. and then the corona, and then you'll go back over to clouds. All right, so the uh, tornado watch has expanded a little bit farther to the north, or at least some more counties have been added into it. So let's go back to Sarah Blue. She's in the weather center tracking or monitoring the uh, storm prediction center's watch outline. Sarah, what's the latest? Hey, Brett, thank you. Yeah, we just got this update to the uh, tornado watch. It's been expanded a little bit more into East Texas. Uh, so for the areas that we were seeing, that includes Houston and Trinity County. That goes until 8 p.m. for the tornado watch. And for all of the areas that are um, the other counties that are highlighted here in East Texas, that tornado watch goes through 5 p.m. So that includes Jasper, Newton, Tyler counties, among many others. Um, Jacksonville, Nacogdoches, Lufkin, some of our cities that are highlighted in that. You want to make sure that you are staying weather aware, especially if you're out watching the eclipse. Make sure that you are keeping your eye on the weather as well on the eclipse. Um, and go ahead and make sure that you have two ways to receive weather information because when we see this watch, that means there is a potential for a tornado out of these storms. So I'm going to go ahead and step off so I can show you a little bit more. But overall, uh, just make sure that you are staying weather aware. We have these cells that we're tracking. I'm going to go ahead and turn off our watch warning so you can just see where they are. Those storms are going to continue to trek up to the north. You can see them toward Hemp Hill, Nacogdoches, south of Lufkin. Right now, no rotation out of them just yet, but there is a potential again for that. Right now, we're just seeing some uh, significant hail sizes out toward Hemp Hill and south of Lufkin. I'm going to keep you updated every step of the way here, so keep checking back with us here on CBS 19. Right now, I'm going to send it back over to our chief meteorologist, Brett Anthony and Mariah Conda. All right, Sarah, again, if you're looking at us right now, you may think, oh, it's it, it's, it's kind of dark. Yeah, uh, the sun now popping out just above us. There is some clearing of the clouds around us. You can see they're just kind of breaking up a little bit right where the sun is experiencing totality. Uh, there are some darker clouds back off to the to the northwest and now we're going back into a patch of clouds we've really been struggling when i look up i'm not looking into the sun yeah it's, i was literally gonna it's, say it, yeah it's clocked <laughs> up, so I'm, i have my glasses on when when i we know we can, we we sense that it's a little bit clearer but it hasn't done that yet all right uh dan malay out live with us today too he's uh seen areas in in the clouds out of the clouds a little bit of everything yeah it's just been kind of changeable let's go to dan and find out what the latest is dan Hey guys, yeah, well, the latest is we're what? I mean, about two and a half minutes, maybe three minutes from totality. I just looked up at the sun. Don't do that, everybody. Definitely don't do that. Everybody's game faces are on. The music has stopped. People have kind of stopped milling about. You can kind of see here Jason G showing y'all. Everybody's really setting up. 
getting cozy. A lot of cameras out here. We are not the only camera out here. Far from it. We got some NASA level cameras or, you know, telescopes over here. But I mean, people are ready. Like I said, we are getting very, very close. I've got the eclipse glasses in my pocket so that I can stop looking up. I keep looking up to show y'all. Y'all know how to look up. I don't have to teach you how to do that. Um, but this is exciting. Uh, two minutes till total totality um, here in Lindale. Can't wait. Well, yeah, that's yeah. We're so close at this point, and again, it's like a toenail. Yeah, it's just a little toenail sliver left over, but there's enough cloud cover that when we look up, we uh, yeah, we see just a little bit. But yeah, it may look like it's nighttime. Yeah. But the, the the thing is, is that the sun is eclipsed, and so if we had an absolute clear sky, we'd be able to see a lot of really cool things. So there's some headlights coming on. Oh, uh, there it is. The sun's just popping out now. Uh, let's look up and see. It so is a sliver. If you are at sliver, home and you're watching. Right, there it is, yeah. So it's tough to see at this point, but uh, just a little sliver. If you have a camera with a good um, uh, solar lens on it, you can take a picture. But yeah, it's it's just about, I'd call it nine tenths eclipsed. Ooh, it's moving. Right, oh it's, my goodness. And it's about to go into totality. So, and we are going to stay this way for about two minutes uh, here on the square. So a lot of people looking up, it's not quite there. You can still yeah. see the sun, it's the clouds kind of battling it. And the, the clouds are trying to break up, believe it or not. Yeah, they uh, are. Instead of having that, that, that thick stratus deck, it's now gone into what we call a stratocumulus deck. And now it's, yeah, it looks brighter every time I look up. But again, you look up and you, you just you see just that little bit of a, a sliver of sun. Yeah. So 1.43 is our official time of totality here in Tyler. And it'll be 100% for roughly two minutes. And then it'll slip back out. Now the clouds are preventing us from seeing like the little flash on the horizon. And it also is keeping us there. Is the diamond ring showing up? It might be just the slightest little bit of diamond ring right about there it's hard oh. you'll just see that it'll look like a like a little ring like a little diamond on it and it'll be there for just a second and then now we'll have to see if the clouds can stay clear when we hit that totality mark and we'd be able to see around it uh, there's just plenty of clouds here uh, on the square in tyler and so i could see those clouds as mid-level it is clouds so just dark kinda, it's just kind of drifted apart there right yeah oh yeah it's very bright i just i just wanted to double check As you can hear, the people at the square are cheering. We are getting closer and closer, seconds away from totality. People have been waiting here for we, hours we just for this special moment. Yeah, We've got some honking going on. Get rid of those clouds. Yes. It's, we're gonna watch, look at how those clouds are dissipating. It's amazing. There's the diamond ring. Oh, the diamond ring was fantastic. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> now, all oh, these clouds, the diamond ring was amazing. And now the clouds are over top of it here. Ah, oh, I'm so happy people got to experience the diamond ring. Nice. Oh, come on, clouds, break up. We're, we are in it. There's the Corona. There's the Corona. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Look Perfect. at that. Look at that. Oh. Uh, come on, clouds. We we need to get a beautiful get rid of these. moment. We got a couple of. Oh my goodness! Yes. For those watching, it is perfect totality right now. We are getting glimpses of it. It looks more white than orange. Well, that's the corona around oh, it. Oh, okay. So that's the the sun's magnetic field. Look at it. Stunning. Oh, it is stunning. And with the clouds, it's sort of uh, there's. Oh, we're going back to the. Uh, then we're going to go back to the, oh, you can see there, there's a planet. Yes. So we have a planet. Now what we would want to look for is the possibility of seeing a comet. We've got another planet over here. Wow. We see Bailey's beads around yes. it. So you can see the little beads, the little, so the, re, the sunlight's coming through the, the valleys on the moon and it's giving us that appearance. Oh my gosh. And the Corona is just majestic. It is absolute majestic. Woo. All right, I want to see if there's anything else in terms of clear skies. We still see Bailey's beads. We're going to go this back to the diamond ring powerful. here in just a second. Yes. So keep it. If we had 
the perfect viewing conditions, we'd be able to see the Pons Brooks Comet, but I believe it's going to be a little bit behind the cloud cover. But the fact that you can see planets and stars yes. in the middle of the afternoon. It definitely looks like the clouds are. It's, yeah, it's just they thinned been, out. Now, watch, they're going to thin out. We're going to go into an absolute. There's the diamond ring. Diamond ring oh, on the backside. Okay, I'm obsessed. That. Oh, my goodness. Oh, the diamond Woo! ring was amazing. Woo! Love it. Oh, the gleam. Yes. I'm assuming that's why they call it the diamond ring. That is why. That is why. And now we're going to slide. Now we're coming back out of totality. Still in a. a Am ability. I safe to keep my glasses off? You, have, you need to put your glasses back on now. So if oh, anybody's boo. watching, put your glasses back on. We've come out of totality and we are back on the other side. So we'll go through everything that we experienced and that we didn't And we're experience. starting to see the sunlight come back. Yeah, we're starting to see the sunlight coming back on this other side. So it was, it was brief uh, as expected. Uh, uh, you know, and it was, mad, it, was, it was incredible how we thought that the clouds would kind of break up due to the loss of solar radiation that indeed happened. Yes. So if you look This was back, my first one. I'm glad I got to spend it with Brett. Mariah, my absolute pleasure. <laughs> So much fun. This means we're locked in for life, like the sun and the moon. Right, exactly. <laughs> I mean, I, I got a little excited when we saw the corona, but I mean, come on. No, yeah, the corona was amazing. My, it I, was. It I would argue enough. that was my favorite part, but I also really liked the diamond ring. I the wish we could have seen the shadows that Jesus was talking about in Gilmer. Yeah, I don't know if we'll, it looks like we probably won't stay clear enough for that because these alto cues are coming back in pretty quickly and they'll probably fill the sky back in. But yeah, look, it's starting to brighten back Loving up a little it. bit. Loving so it. From there it was. 7 p.m. back to 2 p.m. <laughs> and that, a blink of an eye. That was the moment. <laughs> that was the moment. Let me know if we're going to go out for reaction from Jesus or Dan or Savannah or anybody. Uh, I need to, every time I look back up there. But, you know, and I'm not sure if the cloud cover, yeah, it, you know, we, we could still see a few stars and planets. Mm -hmm. it, it seemed to accentuate Mm -hmm. The Corona, perhaps, just a little yeah. bit. I don't know if that made the, the experience I better. liked it, yeah. But I mean, I don't have anything else to compare it to, but I actually liked the, what you're talking about, the cloud cover. It made it look like the Corona was pulling towards me or something. I don't know how to explain yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Now we're, we're, we're back. It's going to come out of this pretty quickly. So. Seems like we've got some oh, people yay. looking Somebody at me. Somebody just said it was the coolest thing ever. Yes, it was the coolest thing ever. She's going to remember this moment. Right, absolutely. This celestial event. It, it was, seems like... Yeah. People are looking. All right. All right. People are definitely looking to uh, beat the traffic now that we've passed the moment of totality. Well, they're that's smart because we have the severe weather watches down. Also the south, true. So. All right. So Dan Malay is uh, is he in Mineola? He is in Lindale. He's in Lindale. That's right. So let's go to Dan Malay in Lindale, where they had Eclipse in the park. Yes. And let's find out. Let, uh, Dan, how was it? Did did it stay clear for you guys? All right, you might be having some total difficulties there, but uh, not caused by the eclipse. No, <laughs> <laughs> like or er like earthquakes retrograde. are caused by eclipse. Yeah, yeah. I've seen a lot of crazy theories <laughs> on social media. There's a lot and of things. Speaking of social media, uh, we had a Facebook post up for you guys to drop your eclipse photos all throughout the eclipse, and some of the photos were amazing. Some of y'all played too much. They posted eclipse cards. Oh yeah, right. And or the one the picture of eclipse gum because yes. it was too cloudy. Yes. We, I think we still saw it. All right. Jesus Martinez is out live for us today. And every time we've gone to, we, we were going to, to Jesus and he kept saying, it's cloudy when you come to him. Mm -hmm. Then we went to him and it was sunny. All right, Jesus, moment of truth. Like? What was it like? It was amazing. It was sunny. We got to see the Corona. It was nighttime, just like you guys saw in Tyler. We got a lot of cheering here. I don't know what Tyler has right now, but we got fireworks here in Gilmer. I don't know who was popping fireworks. We got fireworks, cheering, the whole shebang out here. It was quite amazing. Thankfully, we're on a busy road. Nobody stopped by. Everyone pulled over safely, and so it was quite amazing. A lot of cheering out here. The automatic lights turned on. Uh, it was really, really like it was about to be sunset with a beautiful, beautiful corona, as you guys were mentioning. We actually, I think we saw what planet, I, which I believe is Jupiter. Brett, correct me if I'm wrong, but I did see what I believe was a planet on the lower right-hand side 
of the sun. But hey, you guys, it was quite amazing out here. The sun is starting to come back out. It looked like the world literally stopped for a couple of minutes because there were no cars. It was quite silent besides the cheering. Now life is somewhat back to normal on this highway. Roads are starting to fill back up. The people are starting to leave as well. Like you guys mentioned, there is severe weather coming. But thankfully here in Gilmer, the, got, the guys, the clouds cleared up. And so it was quite an amazing experience for, I mean, all the families who came out here that traveled so many miles cross country. Super glad it was well worth it for them, especially from all over the country, Wisconsin, New York, Alabama, from all over. We've got even a couple from Florida that I forgot to mention. So quite an amazing experience. And Brett Demore, I think from now on, I'm going to become a solar eclipse chaser because you, can't, you just can't have one eclipse in your life. You got to see all of them oh. while you're alive. I mean, am I right? I love to hear it, Jesus. Yeah, absolutely. So 2044, we know <laughs> Jesus will be chasing that eclipse. Yeah, that is great. Yeah, he's right. There were planets that were visible. Uh, I'm not sure we could see Ponds Brooks, the comet from our vantage point mm -hmm. here, uh, but that would have been the streetlights in Tyler came on just as if it was dusk. Yes. Uh, yeah, crowds cheered. I think I, I heard think the band play. A... I miss you, and that's how I feel about the the eclipse. <laughs> it's already. <laughs> it's it's amazing that it's already come and gone. We and it's it's rapidly filling back years in. Years and years of anticipation for four minutes for most people. Yeah. All right, you guys. We are gonna go ahead and send things back over to Dan Malay. He's in Lindell right now at their eclipse event. Dan, what was the experience like for you? Hey guys, Mike's working now, sorry about that. Um, it was good, I mean, it was really cool. I certainly enjoyed it. I think everybody out here enjoyed it. The views were okay, it was a little bit cloudy. Sounded like it was maybe a little clearer for y'all in Tyler, just you know, based on what I was hearing in my ear. But we got a little cloud coverage. For the most part, I think we got a pretty good view. Everybody seemed to be pretty happy with it. It certainly went dark. It certainly was a total eclipse at the park here. And yeah, people are already starting to head out. So if you want to hit the highways and start heading home early, probably be a good time to start doing so. A lot of people still soaking it in, but as we see here, I mean, the eclipse is over. For, for some people, that's all there is to see, obviously. This is beautiful Lindale. We're in East Texas. There's way more than an eclipse. We know that, but for out-of-towners, the, the time is now to get on out of here. But it was a great event, and I mean, like Jesus said, I might have to become an eclipse chaser myself. I mean, pretty, pretty awesome. Pretty cool stuff, guys. Yeah. Thank yeah. you, Dan. Ab absolutely. Uh, you know, we saw the diamond ring. I think that was probably all going into totality yeah. and coming out of it was amazing. Yes. And we could see Bailey's beads. So those are those little brilliant beads of light yes. um, coming through, sunlight coming through the Moon's Valley. So that was really cool. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I mean, we, we kind of started to clear off a little bit. Happened in 2017, probably a little more clearing back yeah. then from what I experienced in here today. Um, but yeah, and now have you heard from your wife yet on yeah, the foreign exchange uh, yeah, she student? A picture. How was the experience? It looks like it was really good. So hopefully we'll find out how Charlotte enjoyed it from all the way from Germany. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So if you guys to didn't East know, Texas to see it, right? Yeah. So um, yeah, a lot. That was a lot of money on that money, not real money on the line, but, <laughs> you know, to, to to place your bets and be like, I'm going to yes. East Texas for this. Right. And then uh, yeah, so I'm excited. I would really like to know what uh, Tyler Gant, the uh, Canadian that came oh, here, that's right. specifically yeah. just because it's named Tyler, thought of this experience and the Rose City. Everything is starting to clear out here right now. We do have people leaving. Some people are staying, enjoying the rest of the event, or just waiting for traffic to die down. Yeah, there's still there's still some some time. I mean, there's music still playing. Mm -hmm. Still, they wanted to make it sort of a an afternoon event. Uh, any showers and thunderstorms are south of Lufkin. Mm -hmm. They are building down in, around Bryan and eastward over toward. Um, well, that's going all the way over to Jasper County. So You're talking about the storms. Yeah. So there's still time. For you to get to where you need to go and Tyler is by the way not in the tornado watch currently. Okay, good. Goes up to about Palestine, stretches across maybe Jacksonville on the northern edge and just south of Henderson and then over toward mm. uh, looks like Carthage and southward. So. Okay, wow. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to be monitoring this. Our weather team is going to be monitoring this all evening long into the evening hours should I say. Oh yeah. Um, but for now we're going to toss things back over to meteorologist Sarah Blue. Sarah, what do you think? 
Oh my gosh, Mariah, Brett, this was one of the coolest things that I think I've ever seen. I just ran outside our CBS 19 studio to get a pretty good view of it, and it was completely dark. The clouds cleared away just in time for us to see it. It looked just like this, except about a thousand times better in person. Uh, it's going to start to get a little bit brighter outside right now, but I was shocked at how dark it got. Definitely a wonderful experience. Um, I'm so glad that I got to see it. I hope that y'all got to see it too. And um, it sounds like y'all had a great time seeing it in downtown Tyler. I don't know if it was as cool as it was here in the CBS 19 studio parking lot though. <laughs> Definitely very cool. I'm going to send it back to you guys though. <laughs> I never heard them say they I thought it was. The, the fact that we had everybody lined up here yeah. looking up and then they, they, I guess, you know what, I was a little, I was a little shocked by the, the crowds, the yeah. reaction. It was huge. Like they really People were cheered. clapping. Yeah. Cars driving by were honking their I know, horns. I know, you know, it was going into it with all the clouds yeah. and then I was like, oh the my The buildup was amazing. And then, yeah, and then everybody, yeah, for those two minutes, yeah. it was it was great. Yeah. It's, At first, for a second, it got dead silent because everyone had their eyes to the sky. Then when they started to see the magic happening, everyone started cheering. It was great. And the winds got calm. Yes. That was unexpected. Um, so things that happened, winds get calm, that happened. Temperature dropped a little bit, yes. that happened. I noticed that there were no birds chirping. You're it, right. It was very silent. Yes, it did. So again, one of those examples of, of totality. So yeah, a lot of things that are supposed to happen, happened. I loved how the street lights came on. Yes. Like as if it was evening. It got so dark out here. I thought it was time for dinner. <laughs> I haven't even had lunch yet. Certainly, yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're just coming across about 2 o'clock. And uh, yeah, now, now I wish the sky was like this, mm -hmm. um, you know, going into that. But you have to remember, when we got to that point of totality, we lost, oh my goodness. So there's usually about 1,300 watts per meter square of energy coming into the Earth at any point. We lost about 1,200 yeah. of that. So yeah, now you have to build that back yeah. up again. Not so, a good day for a, yeah. a solar panel. So I know that's, that's a whole people. lot of like kind of science. So you have that, all that incoming radiation, it stopped. And so this happens for a little while and we'll build that back up coming out the other side and then you'll see those clouds build. So. I will yeah. agree with Sarah though. I The darkness of it was definitely um, shocking for me. I didn't expect it to get so dark. So, so dark. that was super cool. Exactly. All right, well, that's going to do it for us yeah. here uh, for our CBS 19 live stream of the Great American Eclipse. We hope it was totally out of this world. <laughs> totally, totality Total, out, totality of this world. out of this world. Totality out of this world, right? We're going to join CBS uh, News yes. live coverage. Uh, Mariah, any final thoughts? Brett, thank you for letting me experience this moment with oh, you. Oh, thank you very I'll much. I'll remember it forever. Hey, thank you for watching and sharing this moment with us. Yes.